In this video, I will show you how to use Adobe Photoshop to create a customizable t-shirt design for selling on Sazzle. Welcome to Financial Freedom Style, it's Trevor. I am making this video for one of my viewers' requests on how to create t-shirt designs using Adobe Photoshop that buyers can customize on Sazzle. Most of the designs for my print-on-demand business are actually created by Adobe Illustrators instead of Photoshop because I like the idea of vector graphics which means the artworks I created are always scalable in any size without losing any image quality. However, I still use Adobe Photoshop sometimes, mostly for supporting needs such as cropping, changing pixel sizes, and creating effects that Illustrator cannot do easily. And I have been using the tool software for over a decade due to my past job as a graphic designer at a global company. I can't say that I'm very experienced, but I will just share what I know about Photoshop with you. The time of this recording is in early April, and the Easter holiday is coming. So let's pretend I have already done my research about what's trending for Easter this year in 2022. And let's pretend it is gnomes and Easter eggs. You will either go right into Photoshop and start designing from scratch if you are experienced and know exactly what you want to create. Or you can find existing resources and use them to help you come up with a design. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use existing resources in order to help me speed up the design process. I downloaded these Easter Gnomes watercolor artworks on Creative Fabric Card for free when there was a special deal just a while ago. These high quality graphics include a commercial license, which means you are allowed to use them for your print on demand business as long as you follow the license terms. This graphic listing is not for free anymore. However, you can actually still get it as well as everything else the website has to offer for only $1 the first month if you sign up for their membership. I think it is an amazing deal, especially that you can cancel the membership at any time. If you want to use the graphics on the Creative Fabric Card website as well, I highly suggest you go through their license page at least once. It is not that long and they even show you some real examples what you can do and cannot do to help you understand better. I will put the links in the description for your convenience. Basically, the simple way to make sure you are safe to use these graphics without getting into trouble is always making changes to the original. Never just use them as is. I will show you what I mean in a bit when I'm creating today's design in Photoshop. Since I have the graphics now, it's time to get on Photoshop. I'm still using the Adobe CS6 version, while you can only get the Creative Cloud versions nowadays. However, this is already good enough for what I need to do for my print-on-demand business. To get started, on the top menu, you will go to File and click on New. Based on my research and my experience with print-on-demand so far, the ideal size for t-shirt designs on Sasso is 4500 pixel wide by 5400 pixel in height. This is actually the exact dimension required by Merch by Amazon, which is the print-on-demand platform offered by Amazon, which means your t-shirt designs will be suitable for both Sasso and Merch by Amazon. And as for the resolution, you want it to be at least 300 pixels per inch for printing purposes. You can go higher if you want, but 300 is a good spot for most printing. As for the color mode, according to Sasso's recommendation, you want it to be in RGB. And as for the background, it really depends. You can choose anyone actually. But for today's t-shirt design, I plan to use a white t-shirt. So I'll just choose white. And the rest you can stay the same. This is good now, so I will click on OK. On a PC, I can use the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl-0 to fit the whole canvas on my screen. Next, you want to turn on the layer palette. It's usually on the right hand side. And if you don't see it, on the top menu, you can go to Window and you will find it there. One more thing you can do before getting started but it's not necessary is to set guidelines on the canvas. And to do that, First of all, you need to turn on the rulers. On a PC, the keyboard shortcut will be Ctrl-R. Or you can also find it on the top menu. Go to View 
and you will find it there. Next, you move the cursor on the ruler. Then you click and drag towards the canvas to set your guideline. Notice when the guideline gets close to the center, it will snap. That's when you release the button. And you set a guideline right to the center of the canvas. You will do the same steps with another ruler to set another guideline that's set right to the center of the canvas. Now you have two guidelines and you can toggle it on and off using the keyboard shortcuts. On the PC, it is control semicolon. You can also find the command on the top menu under view. You go to show and you will find it here. But I suggest you memorize the keyboard shortcut. It will save you a lot of time. Now we are ready to create. You can simply start dragging any graphics onto the canvas on Photoshop. You can move the graphics by its layer highlighted using the Move tool. On a default layout interface, it is usually on the left-hand side. If you don't see the toolbar, you can find it on the top menu under Window. And it is this one. So with the Move tool turned on, you can start moving the objects. You can resize the graphic by using the free transform tools. The keyboard shortcut is Ctrl T on a PC. You will go to one of the corner and if you want to resize it proportionally, hold the shift key and drag to resize. Another way to find the free transform function is on the top menu bar, go to edit and it is right here. Now, remember if you just use any of these artworks as is and you want to call it your own design, it is not okay because it's against the license terms. We have to rearrange and make changes to them so it looks like a new design. Let me spend some time to create something new with these graphics. So I use the available graphics and come up with this design. It is about 80% complete. For this ribbon, I will put text on top of it that can be customized later on. But now, I want to show you one more thing. It is to change the ribbon color in Photoshop. What you need to do first is find the layer. In the layers palette, it is actually the first one and the top. Move the cursor on the small thumbnail. And on the PC, hold the control key and left clicks on the mouse to mark the shape of the ribbon. Next. On the top menu, go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Hue and Saturation. Click OK. Then you can change the color of the ribbon by adjusting the value on these bars. There, this is the color of the ribbon I want to go for. I can close this window. Now, Let's say we have all the work done on the Photoshop side. So we need to save the artwork in PNG format, which will allow the image to have a transparent background. The first step we need to do is turn off the background layer that is in white color. In the layers palette, move the cursor to the background layer. Go to the eye icon. Click it once to turn it off. Now you have a transparent background. Next. On the top menu bar, go to File, go to Save As, and under Format, choose PNG. Come up with a name of the design. In my case, it is Easter Design Sample. Then I'll just Save. Click OK, and you just save a PNG file of this design. We will now move on to the Sasso platform to finish off the rest of the design. 
We are now on the Sasso homepage. I'm thinking about creating a girl's t-shirt for this design. So on the left menu bar, go to create. Click on the white t-shirt thumbnail under blank products. Scroll down a little bit and click on kids t-shirts. Scroll down and there's a girl's basic t-shirt in white. Click on it. Click on the add image button. We are now in the Sasso's design tool. We need to upload our artwork. On the left hand side, go to upload images, find the artwork in my computer and open it. The design is already looking good in the mock-up previews in the lower right hand corner. You can click on the photos to enlarge it. Close it. Let's turn on the layers tab on the left bar. And it is time to finish up the design by adding customizable text on it. With the keyboard shortcut, press letter T for the text tool. Type in a name and press OK. I want to change the font to Indie Flower. And I want to resize the font. 130. Let's move the text on top of the ribbon. Then scroll down on the right hand side. Where you see curvature, I will change it to negative 0.75. Move the text to center it on the ribbon again. Now I want to change the font color to match the ribbon. On the right hand side, I will scroll up to find color. I'll click on it. What I want to do is click on the eyedropper tool. And you can pick a color on your artwork. I'll pick the darkest shade of the ribbon. It's looking good. I want to make a copy of the text. So with the text layer already highlighted, on the top menu, I can go to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste. I want to move this new text layer to the top. On the right side tool, go to Edit Text, click on it, and change the text to 2022. Click OK. Scroll down on the right hand side again to find curvature. And this time I will put in 0 0.8. Adjust the position of the text a little bit higher. And once again, I want to change the font color with the eyedropper tool. So on the right hand side, I'll scroll up to find color, click on it, and go to the eyedropper tool, click on it, and this time I want to pick a color on the head the gnome is wearing. Looking good. Now this is the part where we create customizable text for the design. With the text 2022 selected, on the right hand tool, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you will switch on this button that says make this a template object. You can label it for this one. Year. Now select the text header. Same thing on the right hand side, turn on the button that says make this a template object. And you can label this as name and the whole design is completed we can test it out by clicking on the done button on the upper right hand corner click on personalize this template and you can see the label i just created for year and name let's try to change the name from heather to elisa and let's try to change the year from 2022 
to 2023. It's working very well. And because our design is in a PNG format with a transparent background, we can change the color of the shirt and the graphic is still looking beautiful. This t-shirt design is ready for sale. All you need to do is click on the sell it button. You will fill out the title, the description, the tags, set the pricing, etc. And your new t-shirt design will be up for sale on Sazzle in no time. So this is how you can create a customizable t-shirt design using Adobe Photoshop and Sazzle with their built-in design tool. Hopefully this is helpful to my viewer who asked me to make a video about it and for anyone else who might be also looking for help with it. What I show you today, make sure you take action and practice it to get the skill down because just watching is simply information. If you find any value in this video, hit the like button and I appreciate it. Also consider subscribing and turn on the bell so you'll be notified when there's new updates on this channel. What other topics related to print on demand would you like to learn more about? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.